If you were quiet, patient and lucky, you sometimes get to catch a glimpse of a beautiful thing. Like the first swallow of the summer, an episode of The Simpsons that not only have you not seen before, but isn't shit. Or a perfect couple. Not a happy couple, or a good looking couple, but a perfect couple. True love. The once in a lifetime opportunity that most people never get once in their lifetime. Such a couple are Sean and Natalie. They are destined to be that perfection. It's as if Cupid has struck them down with a modified AK-47. The only thing that stands in the way of their idyllic existence is them. They've never gotten it together. Sean is too scared to make a move. He's managed to convince himself that if he ever did, she would utter the blood-curdling words of, What are you doing? So every time he postpones it, knowing that the next hug goodbye will be when that look happens, the elongated eye contact, and then the eventual kiss. It has been a summer of mislove. They have spent most days together and most evenings in pubs, but the chance to kiss has never happened. Well, the chances have happened with an alarming regularity, but neither sees them. But all this is over. This is it. She's going to Australia for three months, so now he is left with the most difficult moment to try it, when they are actually saying a proper goodbye. All the times when they hugged outside each other's houses, drunkenly held hands in pubs, or even that time he'd orchestrated a session of the two of them tickling under a tree, when the laughing stops, the kissing can commence. Even a fool could have made the move. All he's had to do is to say one sentence, ask one question, and everything would be different. That one question could be the key to unlock his dream life, but he hasn't asked it, and the door is not only locked, but bolted, chained, and has a chair waist under the handle. He has helped her load the suitcase into the luggage hold. He can't say anything now. People are getting on the coach. It would be awkward. Bye then, he says. They hug. The words, I think I love you, are travelling from his brain down to his mouth, stopping off to be filtered through the teeth. He gets as far as saying, I think, when the hug is over. And she says, see you soon. I'll miss you. In such a platonic way that how could he have ever thought that anything could ever have happened? The words are caught by the teeth filter and sent hurtling to the back of his mouth, where they land and make a lump in his throat. She should kiss him. That's all she's thinking. Why doesn't she kiss him? She gives him three more seconds and then she'll kiss him. Definitely. But the three seconds are up and she can't. She says, see you soon. I'll miss you. And they stare at each other. They both know they should be in the middle of kissing right now. But the stare is broken. And minutes later, Natalie's heading for Australia and Sean for Tesco's. If this was a standard romantic comedy, then we'd all know they'd get it together eventually. Well, before any of you get your hopes up, Sean and Natalie are doomed. As the coach pulls away, the rarest kind of love is lost. Sean hasn't quite yet grasped this, and as soon as the coach is further away than kissing distance, he can see with an unnerving clarity just what he's missed. He runs after the coach, but this is real-life romance. The driver wouldn't stop. Coach drivers never stop. Natalie can't concentrate on her magazine, wishing that she'd kissed him, and hoping desperately that Sean would be running after the coach, but she knows that that only happens in silly romantic comedies, and so she doesn't turn around to see her wish coming true. Sean gives up. He ran as fast and as far as he could, and only got to see the coach pulling away all over again. He swears that a lung has ruptured and he collapses to the floor, tears falling into the gutter as he reaches for his ventilator and says goodbye to true love.